So, did you ever have a good time last night at the Build a Bear? And thank you so much to Build a Bear, right? Okay, they're going to say you're going to have a time for the class, for the choir, for the warm, for the party. Tell us what. And here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Survivors. 
my dad was diagnosed when I was a kid. Men, when you tell people that uh, their father had breast cancer, they're like, what, really? Your dad had breast cancer? Fact. Men can and do get breast cancer. They don't get it in the same numbers that women do, but they do get it. My mother was diagnosed 13 years ago when um, I was about six months pregnant with my son. And I was so shocked because my mom was the same way. She ate right, she exercised, she drank aloe vera juice, she did all the things that, you know, that you're supposed to do to stay healthy, but she still was this. Who in here thinks? That the biggest risk factor for breast cancer is family history. I want to see your hand up if you believe that. Raise it high. Don't be afraid of your opinion. If you think breast cancer, the biggest risk is family history, raise your hand. You're all wrong. The biggest risk factor for breast cancer is being a woman and getting older. Period. Um, family history counts for about 5 to 10% of breast cancer cases. Women of color are diagnosed a little bit earlier. And they are diagnosed, diagnosed less, but they die more. So there are some disparities that need to be remedied. So when my parents had breast cancer, I was already at you know, risk just by being a woman and being older. With my parents and two parents, first three relatives, I was at even more risk. So I um, was having mammogram for the year and then the mammogram would be followed by a biopsy. And I had four biopsies in four years. All on the left breast, all in the same place, until my breast had had enough and just collapsed on the left. And it was working at CBS at the time, and I, I really didn't even want to be so to see. But the, I had this big dent in my breast. Around that time, we started talking, I started, I was at school more at Sloan Kenner. And I started talking to my doctor about how to keep me from getting cancer. This was not, I didn't want to play defense. I want to play offense. How do we keep me from getting cancer? So I had genetic testing. I did not have the gene. But clearly, you know, we only know two genes affiliated with breast cancer associated with it. There could be many more, we just don't know yet. I didn't have any of those. And, but clearly something was wrong. Um, so I started, started trying to figure out how to keep me from getting cancer and we came up on preventive mastectomy. So I opted for a preventive mastectomy, and I told the students at CVS, and <laughs> I had my preventive mastectomy, I told the students at CVS, and they fired me. Not because of the mastectomy, please don't tweet that. <laughs> oh my God, they fired her for having a mastectomy. No, 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 no. no. But it's only Okay, I, you know, they, the proverbial one went in a different direction, that's fine. Um, but they, they did not always have enough mastectomy, and the time was hard. I had mastectomy, Oprah's camera crew followed me, and I ultimately, look how happy I am to have her feeling me up. I go, hey! There she is, touching me in front of 9 million, um, 9 million of her viewers. And I was actually, I was on my book as well, but, um, so there she was, and it was a great platform to be able to talk about, about breast cancer. So, um, yeah, there they are. <laughs> yeah. That's a lovely, nice retouch photo, right? Butter! And I was, I, I can't say that it wasn't sun. I was kind of surprised, but not really. I and mean, no, it just, yeah. anyway, more on that side. Okay. Gem truth number, oh my gosh, I lost my number. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, surround yourself with white people. I can't tell you how critical this is. If you have frenemies, get them out. Get them out. Because those people, you need people who are going to stoke your fire, not stoke your fire. Okay? So if you need to have good people around you. And one of the best for me is that dude right there. Hmm. Although I'm kind of pissed down this morning, so I don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry, someone else is angry with their husband, too. But, um, I'm kidding, sorry. Um, but uh, so I married him like 18 years ago. And um, he really was, and was made, the flag waving, card carrying only member of the Renee Sada fan club. And he remains so to this day. People ask me, how did you get through that time? How did you make it? How did you? 
How did you? And you might. Well, Sean, I did it with them. Oh, hold on. And 
But I realized that it was like the final piece in my surgical operating system. Because it was time to change my mind, to become a woman that I am inside. For the first time, I looked in the mirror, and the person on the outside, that's the person on the inside. And it was like all the pieces, clink, 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 all came And I was like, I'm done. I'm not going to compromise anymore. I'm not going to straighten my hair. And again, it's not about the chemical. It was about what it represented to me. And this is what happened. It did. You know how it is? It looks damn good. <laughs> Kids, and what fun is that? 
think what happens is that we feel like we have to because that's what society says moms do. Not this mom. And my kids are doing just fine. All right, we don't eat cereal every night. <laughs> but um, so that was my goal was to pull back this hurt mom not our mother thing. The other thing I really want women to do is understand that you have to take yourself off the bottom of the very long and growing to do this. Okay? I love to hear this. Oh, I can't do it. I have to take care of my kids. Oh, I, I, I just can't. I have to take care of my kids. Guess what? You're in a hospital bed. It's hard to take care of kids. Okay? You have to feed yourself mentally, spiritually, emotionally, physically, all this mental health. All of you here today, I hope you are going to my rock star tonight. Because you need that. You can go back to your life tomorrow. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but you need that. And there is nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with telling your children, you need to go team break. Um, because guess what? I do it, and it makes me a better parent when I can eat those parts of myself. Can we get this one, Sean? You think John Moe's Jones could train like that with any old stupid pair of shoes? Yeah, right, nerds. It's either tubes or weakness. There is no middle third choice. Who knows that is? Come on. Oh, look at all the guys. like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Teddy Power. You guys know Teddy Power? Oh, I love this he's down. down. It's probably so old for what he's about to say, but it's fine. Um, there is no middle third choice. Okay? I say that because. He is who he is. No one can be like that. No one can any powers in the church. No one can be like that. Um, but he is who he is, and he doesn't make apologies for that. When I first got into uh, this world, your world, which is now part of my world, I came from the old world, TV. I have a number of friends who are still in TV who think that I'm not really sure what we do, and when they find out what I do, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> Really, really enjoy the retirement? Well, <laughs> here's my favorite. What are you doing now? I'm like, Google it. Just type in Renee Silo and see what happens. Um, when I was a Disney social media mom, these, the things that I was saying, these women were tweeting and live blogging my speech, that they made me the number one trending topic on Twitter. I was with Wigan Morris Agency for 15 years. And trust me. About that. <laughs> right? <laughs> the key, when I got out of TV and I started moving into this world, I realized it was like the blinders fell away. And I was like, okay, first of all, this is a very effective way to communicate to the people and my audience and the people I'm trying to reach. That was the first thing. And the was like, oh, wait, I can make money doing this? Because ultimately, that's my goal. When people say, well, what do you want to do? Where do you see good enough mother going? And what do you want to do? And I'm like, uh, I want to be richer than a lot of third world countries. <laughs> um, but, but, uh, and you know what? Listen, I don't think that's bad to say. You gotta name it to claim it, okay? <laughs> um, it doesn't make me like soulless or you know, like I'm still a good person, and I, you know, I still do a lot of charity, and I still, am, I still have a good side. But I want to be comfortable. I'm sure you guys do too. Um, at the end of my sort of, as I was going through this this transformation, I shot a couple of pilots um, that didn't get picked up. One of them, you really will know, um, who I shot. Anybody know who I shot? Okay. You didn't? You want to watch it? Name? They're all like, who's the TV? Okay. Yeah, they're all Googling it. They're all, I, I like you to talk to her about Tay. I know. Um, anyway, so I shot a couple of pilots, and nothing happened. And I kept waiting, I kept waiting for my agents to call, I kept waiting for somebody to call, and nothing was happening. And then I'm like, wow, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this myself. If I do see that table, table 10 over there, every one of them is pretty lame. <laughs> um, but I realized I was going to have to do this myself. I didn't have money for a high power one with publicists. I had agents and saw where that got them. Um, I was waiting for people to go, what are you to Renee Siler? But you know what TV's like? They you know, the attention span of a hummingbird. So once you're gone, it's out of sight, out of mind. And so I had to figure it out. I had to 
reinvent. And the only thing I could do is use the tools in my arsenal, my ability to write and social media. Wasn't good at it to begin with, and I'm learning still, including coming to conferences like this. But this is what you guys do is the stuff that makes me so excited to be a part. I didn't, I came from a world where we waited to be tapped on the shoulder and anointed. And you are going to be the next fill in the blank, the next talk show host, the next news anchor, the next, you know, TV news anchor, the next blah, blah, blah. When I got out of that world and I saw all this stuff, you guys were doing, I was like, wow, with mega followers. And not just, unlike television where they're like hoping a portion of the audience is going to um, be interested in what they have to say, the people who follow you are converts, they're believers, they're committed. If you stand up and you say, I like blank brand, your followers will be like, oh, I should try that because it's the trust that actually is there. So that was one of the things that um, during my transformation, I, you know, I have not even fallen of myself out of it, but anyway. Um, okay, <laughs> not everyone's going to like you. Let that be their problem. Okay? Not everyone will like you. That's not your problem. How much time do you want to spend trying to get people to like you? I don't have that kind of time. I'm trying to figure out what to have for dinner and feed my kids. So let that be their problem, not yours. This is, I believe, a hard concept for women to understand and to embrace. Recently, I was a dizzy social media mom. What did I say? I said, there's no room for people in your life to feel that. Okay. Very recently, I'm not going to go into great detail. And I think, do we want to leave time for, did I run off for like two minutes? Okay. I think recently I went through a situation where I was with someone, working with someone, who did not make me feel good. And I was starting to tiptoe around and starting to go over and emails again and again and again because I was nervous and didn't want to be blah, blah, blah. And one morning, I looked at my head and I said, if I don't do something about that, I'm a hypocrite. Because I stood up here and told all of these women, yeah, you know, the da 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 da, and then I'm cowering in my closet. What is that all about? So I woke up that morning and just said, no, I'm not working on it anymore. And um, we went our separate ways. Has been difficult, of course. But well, you know, life is hard. Didn't we talk about that already? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it's not that I can't do what I'm doing. I don't know everything, but I'm smart. And I have YouTube. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I can learn what I need to learn. But I just feel like, you know, if you have, I'm serious about this lady, this gentleman, if there are people in your life who are not even pushing you into the wind instead of pushing you again, get them out. That's no, that ain't no good, okay? That ain't no good. The last thing I'm going to say, and then I'll let you ask a couple questions, is believe in happily ever after. But then you better make it happen. You, you can believe in that fairy tale, but you need to make it happen. Because it's not going to happen unless you do. I'm living proof of that. Um, if I had not sort of taken the reins and thrown on the saddle and I had to saddle up that pony myself, I'd still be sitting at home waiting for an agent to call or being bugged into a job that I didn't want to do. It doesn't work like that. This is this part, I don't even need to preach this part, but this is the part you guys already know. You all have carved out a niche. You know what to do with it. You know how to communicate to your audience and make it happen. That's impressive. That, that's the American way. <laughs> and that's a great thing. The last couple things that I have on the slides for, I'm going to close with this. And then I'll let you ask a couple questions. Please remember, I talked about it at the beginning, real growth hurts. I said it in Disney Social Media Mom, don't expect to grow when you're comfortable or be comfortable with growth. Because it's like, I always liken it to um, weight training. You've got to break that muscle down to build it up. Okay? And it's hard, and it's hard, and it hurts. But, it, but, but when you look back in your life, at the times when you did the most growing, it's, it's, it was painful. Um, and I, the last thing I want to end with is that you know what? I know I'm loved. There are people, obviously my own family, my husband, my kids, you know, they love me. But I think even when I come here and I 
I get hugs and I, I communicate with so many of you online. I'm like, there's the sisterhood that we have developed through an online relationship. We do feel really, really good. It's really good. I just want to say thank you so much for, for bringing me into the fold, for opening my eyes, and for, for being so patient in, in teaching and in bringing along someone who came from that other, that other world. Thank you so very much. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions? Or did I come? Yeah, oh my gosh. Look, how about I just do the Phil Donahue thing? <laughs>